When a bird arrives in the laboratory, he is given free access to food and water and weighed daily to determine this free feeding or ad libitum weight. He is then gradually reduced to 80% of this weight by being fed a small amount every day. Once motivation is present, the first rule for teaching anything to any animal is to structure the situation so that the behavior is likely to occur. The pigeon is placed alone in a small empty box which eliminates such incompatible behavior as nest building or flying away. The box contains two openings, the response key and the opening to the food magazine. Pecking the key turns out the key light and operates the feeder. The feeder light comes on and the feeder is raised so that the bird can reach the grain. When the circuit is broken, the feeder is lowered out of reach. Before conditioning can begin, adaptation and magazine training must take place. One way to facilitate adaptation to the box is to place food on the floor, especially in the region of the feeder. Magazine training means adapting the bird to the food magazine. Since food is to be the reinforcer, it is imperative that the bird be accustomed to eating from the feeder. When the feeder is raised for the first time, the bird usually startles and jumps back. For most pigeons, the initial operation of the feeder is aversive rather than reinforcing. Eventually, however, the bird approaches the feeder and eats from it. Magazine training is continued until the bird approaches the feeder from any part of the box as soon as the feeder is raised. Since the operant level for a pigeon pecking a key is, for all practical purposes, zero, we will not wait for a response to occur so that we can reinforce it. We will shape the pecking response. Shaping consists of reinforcing closer and closer approximations of the response we wish to condition. First, we reinforce any behavior that brings the bird to the end of the box near the key. We his head a little closer to the key. And again. When we demand a little more, he turns away, so we reinforce his return to the right end of the box and a motion toward the key. This preliminary behavior is not being recorded on the cumulative recorder. That will be a record of pecking behavior only. Here the experimenter will try to reinforce a pecking motion toward the key but will actually reinforce turning a circle. His left foot is beginning to turn. The behavior that is reinforced is the behavior that immediately precedes reinforcement. Another motion toward the key. And he pecks the panel just above the feeder. Now he moves his body forward toward the key. But when we try to raise the criterion, we lose him again. So we reinforce a movement of the head and earlier approximations where his head is near the key. Some minutes have passed. He has been coming very close to the key. A pecking motion toward the key.
We wait. And he packs the panel. And again. He made no closer approximations for several minutes. And even now, after the first few responses, pecking the key is not established and we continue to shape. He pecks the edge of the key, but this does not operate the micro switch. We reinforce approximations until the next pecking response when he responds several times in succession. Pecking is erratic at first, but the response is now firmly established. The quickest way to strengthen behavior is to reinforce every response. The reinforcement of every response is called continuous reinforcement, or CRF. Strictly speaking, this bird is not receiving CRF because he pecks more than once before lowering his head to the feeder. Continuous reinforcement produces a steady rate of response in a short period of time. It is not, however, the most economical way to maintain behavior. And, unless a very small amount of food is given each time, the animal may become satiated after as few as 50 or 60 responses. <laughs>